Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Saka here, and welcome back to another episode of Europa Universalis 4. And when we last left off, we took some provinces from France, and we were just putting down the rebels. We're still up 70% from French separatists, but that is only because there's some separatism present in Ghent. Uh, the unrest is at 0.3%. Uh, legitimacy can improve that if we can find a way to become a little bit more legitimate that would be nice and then the separatism will tip down uh, by 0.5 yearly so I think that by the end of this year uh, that separatism will be gone let's go ahead and play at speed 3 we were looking at potential um, conflicts out here to the east and we have there's Luxembourg who doesn't really like us, and if we were to declare war, Saxony, the Holy Roman Emperor, would join, and they have the other allies, Verona and Upper Lorraine. This check mark here says they will be a co-belligerent, and what that means is Savoy will then be able to call in Savoy's allies. General Cla Daniel Clarence will no longer serve us, an army camp in Alcinon. Oh, that's terrible. So, are we ahead of military power? Can we go ahead and recruit another general? We are way ahead of time by eight years, so it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and spend some more on a general. And one thing that we might do once we get this colony, uh, these colonies up and running, and we start settling down here, is we can recruit a conquistador right here, which is needed to walk through Terra Incognita. But since we see things like the Doeg, the Chesapeake Bay, and uh, Nanticoke, we'll be able to settle those directly, and then we'll see if we can get line of sight on it. That should be fine. Let's go ahead and get another general for 50 points and a 2-6-1-1 heavy shock general. I feel like we really need uh, to, to put them into practice there. Let's merge that up and put Lawrence in charge. Vestibigudin has become self-sustaining. Now, that was over here, yes? Sweet. So now we can core it. Oh, it's already a core. So what that is going to do is that's going to extend our colonization range. We have one of two colonists available. The other colonist is up here working in Eriksford. So all we need to do is send down a colonist as far as we possibly can. And you see we can send a colonist there. We can send a colonist there. This is now in range, the east coast. So let us do some forethought. Let's look at the trade map mode. And as you can see, Chesapeake is of the James Estuary, which gives us plus 10 local trade power. We can get there. There are some aggressive natives though. So what I'm going to do that now this colony is self-sustaining. We have these 10,000 troops ready to go. We can go ahead and send the colonist and we can land those 10,000 troops in Chesapeake my only concern is if Powhatan claims Chesapeake then that's not going to be too awful good but what we can do is since Powhatan is right next to Chesapeake we we make this a core and then we can declare war on the Powhatan and and claim this and core it because it is next to a core so that is what we actually need to do there is one pirate ship out here that is causing us all kinds of issues and unfortunately we have three light ships and our transports are somewhere. Uh, are these our transports? Yes indeed, the 25 transports and the five heavies are going to escort these three ships there. And we are going to wreck pirate face is what we are going to do. Uh, and as a matter of fact, since we do have a port up here now that is functioning in Vestbegeden, let's go to Norway and cancel our uh, fleet basing rights while we have forces inside their borders. Okay, so once we pack up our fleet and leave, we'll cancel the fleet basing right and applaud our neighbors and allies for their hospitality. Let's make a move. And then once we pull out, will cancel those fleet basing rights. Like so. All right, locked out of Norwegian ports, but it does not matter because we are making a beeline to our brand new port in Vestbegeden. Once we are able to send some troops down here to Chesapeake, uh, then we can send our colonists as well, and we can start getting a colony on mainland North America. 
Boom! Get out of here, pirate. All right, let's dock on up. Ericsford has risen up. That will be fine. You all are now on Chesapeake duty. Now, we can't land on Chesapeake, but we can go ahead and get our uh, ships in port and then do a marched landing on the Chesapeake. Now is the time I think we can send our colonists because they take 180 days to arrive. So just before, um, just before our colonists arrives, our troops will get there. We're not getting that much attrition. All right, the air falls ill. Oh no, Frederick Williamson breathes heavy. He's been lying in bed for three days now and reflecting the beads of sweat in his forehead and the fear of the attendant's eyes for William's life. He might not make it through the night. Let's take a look at our heir, and is he worth keeping around? That is evil to say, but we want to make sure that this is a solid heir, and a 363 is a very solid heir. We can send for the train Medicus at 164 ducats, 50%, but we gain some legitimacy. Don't die. Dang it! All right, so we got to hope for another heir, unfortunately. That was a really good heir. But so is life. Nice trade efficiency for 10 years. Let them share wealth with us. All right, so we're starting to, to take some attrition here in the Bermudas. We'll get to the Inland Sea. Hopefully uh, that open sea penalty will go away. Yes, indeed. And there are the Powhatan. All right, go ahead and march up to the Chesapeake. Those 10,000 troops will make landfall. And I think as soon as this colonist arrives in 100 days, we'll be able to base up. But let's get them back. Yes, indeed. All right, turn right on around, good sirs. Because I don't want to wait 100 days out in open sea for that uh, colonist to arrive. Hungary is requesting you come to the aid in the Hungarian conquest of Sirdans against Denmark. So there is Denmark up there. The question is, we have 22 transports. How involved are we going to be with Denmark? We will accept the call. The question is, will Denmark send any troops our way? Will they try to invade mainland Great Britain? That is the question. It's worth it to accept, but we need to sort of be on the lookout for Danish fleets. Uh, once our ships embark here and repair up a bit, we'll send the fleet home. And we'll go ahead and accept that. So we are at war with Denmark. We can see 14,000 Danish troops there. There's 24,000 ships there. But you know, their ships really don't look that frightening compared to R33, even though it's majority transport. We do have five heavies, though. We'll do one more monthly tick of repair. All right, so Hungary is moving around. Looks like Hungary is wrecking the Danish forces. I don't know if uh, we're going to be needed. Let's take a look at the... Oh, man. They called in Gr uh, Ancona. They called in Pomerania. 138,000 troops versus 13. I don't think they need us. Even though we're the majority of that army. They only have 13k. Can Denmark call in any allies here? You have truces. Improving relations. Conquest Casus Belli. You're guaranteeing independence. Now I think they're pretty much okay. Now I believe... Let's see, we had our monthly tick here. Let's go ahead and get these guys home. And then once they arrive in Sutherland, we'll see if we can start wrecking some Danish ports, maybe blockading, helping out the war score, uh, getting some contributions. All right, we've been lucky enough to appoint an excellent minister whose actions will be will gr greatly get the realm. One stability, 25 prestige, and 40 admin points. That is amazing. We'll take that for sure. Now, we got some ideas. Are we ahead of time on anything? We are really ahead of time on the Diplo side, which is this side over here. So global tariffs can go up, and we're almost up again on global tariffs. I think that would be worthwhile. 
we are six years ahead of time there. So let's go ahead and take our Viceroys for Global Tariffs. And then in one more idea, we gain an extra colonist and the Global Tariffs plus 15%. So that is all well and good. We can't afford to take the admin ideas because we're behind the times and we want to get caught up. Plus that production efficiency up 2% will be very worthwhile in the grand scheme of things. So Denmark, how are you doing? Looks like Hungary is going for uh, going for broke here. Yeah, I don't think there are any Danish forces left. We could probably go up and siege down some forts, try to get some um, try to get some participation. Here comes our ships. They'll repair up. As a matter of fact, well, I mean we are rebel busting here. That has gone down. We could probably spare this 28 stack from Alcinon. What is the unrest? Negative 6.1, but five of it is friendly troops. Do I want to overcommit? That is the question. Negative 3.1 and two from friendly troops. So we can take these 8K, and that should be enough to do some sieges over here if we take some cannon. That might be worthwhile. Where are all of our cannons? You have two of our cannons. You have no none of our cannons. You have four of our cannons. I think we load up these 8K, and then we move these four cannons over there as well. Can we afford to pare down any more? 4.75. I think we can afford to pare down like four infantry here. And we'll just get ourselves a, a nice fleet here. We'll see if we can uh, make the landing. We'll be bringing plenty of cannon. Oh wait, you're the trade, trade protector. No, 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 no. Get out there and protect trade, please. The English Channel. Where are our transport ships? You. All right, head on down to Continent. We should be fine. Let's take a look at some province improvements here. Churches. That's fine. Production efficiency won't go up that much. Trade power will in Valois. We'll take that all day, every day. Why not there, too? All right, so a 16 stack here. Made up of seven, three, and six. Ideally, we need another cab. But that should be fine. Go ahead and attach that to the transport. We'll dock up in Hungarian own or um, Hungary owned territory. And then we will unleash the beasts. Oh, there we go. Nice. We caught them with their pants down. We don't have a leader, but oh man. Lost 18 troops there, won some war score there. We got those 2.5 on the run. Let's go ahead and assign Lawrence as our leader here. Are there any forts that we need to siege down? Shelland, probably, or Sealand. Let's go ahead and blockade that sea zone. So 33, do we have our admiral in charge of this guy? The fleet is not in port. That 33 stack looked pretty vicious. Five heavies, three lights, and 25 mids. I kind of want to get this blockade going while we have a good siege leader. So let's abandon all trade protection here. Get our entire navy together. Get the arm or the Oh, that's fine. Get the entire navy up with Augustus Herbert and you are going to blockade the crap out of that, please. Let's march to See, movement blocked by a hostile fort. So where is this hostile fort? Yeah, we blockaded the crap out of them. They're not coming out. Interesting. So where is the hostile fort that is protecting this? Let's go to our fort map mode here.
Maybe we weren't protecting the straight? Can we march now? Yes, we can. Awesome. So because we're blockading, we have complete access to the uh, land tiles here. And we'll just siege down Seelin. We've got the manpower to swing it. We've got the reinforcements to swing it. We're already at 0% on the siege. We've got 5 from besieging artillery because we brought 6 cannons. So that's one extra cannon. Not bad. Our leader pip negates the fort level and we are blockading. So this may be a very fast siege. You have one heavy, 12 lights, 20 transports. Yeah, their capital is going to fall very quickly. And that's going to do a lot for our contributions here because right now, well, we're at 23% percent participation. If we can siege down their capital, oh man, that's going to be massive participation. Yeah, we're going up by 7 per tick, so 28 perhaps on the next one should be fine. <clears throat> still expansion ideas, don't want to do that yet. We can still build improvements. A manufactory. I don't know if a manufactory would be worth it. Augustus Herbert will no longer serve us. So that's our other general. Luckily, it's not our siege guy. Because we are doing quite a bit of work here in the siege. Should fall fairly quickly here. Where is our friends from Hungary? Sealand siege down. There's our naval battle. We don't have a leader? No, we had a leader, good sir. Well, we might have sunk some ships, but let's go ahead and pull and get docked up. Thankfully, we were docked. All right, so the next fort that we can get to is right there. We own one side of the strait, so we can go ahead and cross. We'll go ahead and get our ships uh, repaired up, our heavies especially. And they're going to have to do some work to get that... Uh, county back. I kind of, once we get repaired up, I want to poke out and uh, blockade this sea tile to get that blockade bonus for sure. So what kind of bonuses are we getting here? So a minus two for blockade and it takes 10 artillery to get the, the super bonus there. So we don't have an admiral. That's what happened. All right, Diplo. We'll get an Admiral, a 2-2. Not the finest we could have gotten, but no worse than the wear. Supply shortage, so we are making positive gains here on the fort. I'm expecting a bit of reimbursement here because we are 50% contributed. Now, we're not going to separate peace. We could say, look, we've got your capital. We're going to bail out early, but I mean... Hungary is our friend, and Hungary is a pretty powerful player, so I don't want to do that. All right, looks like we're all, well, I would say we're all repaired up. There's a few light ships that have taken a beating. All of our transports are fine, so our heavies will repair up. Looks like they're in port here, hiding from our fleet. We're still making positive gains here, though. All right, new tech, and that is our admin tech at a 10% reduction. We'll go ahead and take that. Production efficiency and corruption loss. And we can take... Oh, military tech. We're ahead by four years now. We don't want to waste the military points, but if we... Uh, we can hire another leader. And uh, just in case, we'll hire a conquistador. Just in case we need to get to Terra Incognita. Our army needs a leader over here. And that should be our conquistador. Pretty good guy. That conquistador was definitely nice. Alright, so our, is our heavies repaired all up? 99, close enough. Let's get out to the sea tile and do some blockading. Get some positive siege progress. There we go. Verona, Tyrol, Baghdad. Baghdad's a thing. All right, our ports were blockaded, but not anymore. Provence, nope. Oh, that's what happened. The fleet saw that we moved away, and they got out of Dodge real quick. They're trying to pick off some of the small Pomeranian fleets. Scandal. 
Sometimes a scandal would erupt in the court and would upset the monarch, lose a stab, gain corruption and money. And that's really all corruption is, is money. We can root out corruption. We make uh, 25 extra gold. So I'm not gonna take the stab hit. I'm gonna take the corruption and I'm gonna make double, double sure that in our economy, we are rooting out corruption as fast as we can. Now, we're gonna be taking a little bit of a deficit but that's fine because at full slider, we're going to really knock that corruption down and that cost will, will slowly go down. We can swing a, an 11 ducat loss for a little bit for sure. So hey Denmark, are you impressed with what we're doing so far? Because we've got 45% of the contribution. There is another siege done. I think we can go fleet hunting now. If these guys are pinned there, these guys can just uh, head on over to another fort and siege that down. Then we could just carpet siege and just like take all of this land in one fail swoop. So there's 23,000 troops there. Erksford is self-sustaining, excellent. So I think what we can do now is because we can see it, nope. Now we can send a colonist there and we can send a colonist there. And because we have the um, the conquistador, we can march around the Powhatan. We don't have to march through. So I think that's a pretty good bet. Uh, that's five base tax to a five base tax. And those are the two that we can get going right away. We can sort of surround the Powhatan. All right, so we'll do that. We'll split in half. We'll take the conquistador. We'll march right on through, and then we'll send the colonists to get Doeg up and running. We want us a naval battle, and these guys look like they're pretty much trapped. We'll go ahead and light up their candle. Captured a ship. Always better to have ships that you didn't buy. And you're trying to blockade, good sir. Well, I don't appreciate such things as these. Yeah, Denmark is on low enthusiasm. We're at 51% of the contribution. Because the fact that we can't core any of the Danish land, I don't think we're going to get any of it. Oh, interesting indeed. They're trying to move a 23 stack on us. Tell you what we will do. Um, let's pour it up. And then that way, if this... Well, I think we can stop their movement here. We can blockade this port so they can't cross. They're gonna have to go the long way around. So Pomerania is doing the work, Hungary is doing the work. Feeling pretty good, feeling like a worthwhile ally here. And we're really only contributing 56 ships and 16,000 men of our entire force limit. So not too upset about that. All right, corruption is completely gone. We have paid away and we didn't lose a stability, and that affects our trade power, uh, taxes, all of that good stuff. All right, Andrew Blake has died. He was our military man. Reinforcement speed, morale is gonna be huge, and I don't wanna pay for a three guy, considering how we are so ahead of military power as it is. We'll go ahead and take Her uh, Henry Rook. And we'll see, our cap is 1138. So hopefully this technology will drop a little bit more. It won't be so much of an ahead of time penalty. And then we can make good use of that. Hopefully this 3K doesn't get sniped by the Danish forces because they are out and about. How are things going here on the West Coast? We have made it, the colonist is there. And that is now trading in tobacco. A pretty potent trade good. All right, Siege of Scarborg is over. So that's pretty much telling me that we can create a new unit, just pull the infantry over, and then we'll just carpet siege. We'll carpet siege all of the land here. All right, some of our the citizens, nice, to our sellers in Koinoi. Yeah, who am I to stop them? All right, go ahead and detach a siege. Move down here. 
and we'll detach another siege and get three counties going at once. Making way for our allies to cross, that is all well and good. All right, we've got that one occupied. They tell us of internal conflicts. What is this? Mongolia faced a decade of chaos. Well, that's all well and good. All right, up to there. Then we'll start a, like a sweep over here. So that's a surrender. And we could have sniped that Navy. Let's see if we can get to them. All right, across our country, there's an outrage we should ally with a nation who holds provinces which are rightfully ours. Put a positive spin. Lose five prestige, but we lose the claim on Reims, and we don't want to upset Aquitaine, so we will revoke the claim. That's, that's fine. I said we were going to in the last episode. If Aquitaine came calling, uh, we were going to get rid of it. Because that's the last thing I want, is a battle with Aquitaine while we're doing all of this. That is for sure. Didn't capture any ships there, but we made them cry, uncle. That's 76%. Nope. Crap, gave up the siege. I meant to select our ships and get them back to Sealand to repair. But no worse for the wear. Great Britain has occupied Dull and Tolan. You come this far, might as well keep on going. Yeah, we'll get Denmark pretty well siege down here. Down to Bleaking, and we don't have another fort until we get up here. I mean, that's pretty impressive. We could pretty much do a big run. The Carpet Siege. All right, so we've got some people influence here. I'm pretty sure we have a good number of cardinals. So let's invest some papal influence until we're evened out. And then we can use the 87 to get some... I don't believe we have inflation. No, no inflation. We really haven't taken gold uh, from anyone or that inflation has been um, used down. Yearly prestige would be nice. That would slow our roll, but taxes, of course, money. Legitimacy, that is gonna be a thing. Let's do that. We need some legitimacy up in this piece. All right, we got Kalmar. Let's go to Ostergotland. All right, Denmark has accepted peace with her former enemy. So Denmark will cede fine Breslau, Holstein, and Demersk into Hungary. Denmark will concede Kalitz, Politz, and Canova to Pomerania. They will renounce their claim on Sandemize. They will release Finland and Livonia as a sovereign state. They will pay 43 ducats to Hungary. All right, with the conquest, they get a penalty, Pomerania. Hungary will get 21 power projection. Do we not get anything from that? That makes me sad. All right, let's go ahead and get them all to the Southern Baltic Sea then. Let's mount up, go home. I don't know if that was worthwhile, but our allies can't say that we didn't support them. All right, our royal marriage is over. Hopefully they will uh, recommend another. We'll bring everybody back home if we can. Get on the boats, please. And then we'll just drop them off back here in what used to be France and be good. High naval attrition. 5%. Time at sea. Base value. We won't be at sea for long. Just hold on to your britches. Come on, 2,000 troops. There you go. Get on the ship. All right. Drop off there at Co. And away we go. So I'm not sure if that was worth it as far as the war goes. I mean, it was a good use of our equipment. I mean, we got some practice. It's a shame we don't have drill. That way our troops would have been pretty outstanding and got some 
uh, combat experience in the field. But now we can go to what we were looking at at the start of the episode was uh, Luxembourg and their attachment to the Holy Roman Empire. Savoy will still call in a bunch of people. All right, those ships will get uh, a Protestant Reformation. Now this is interesting. Uh, Protestantism has appeared in Bohemia. Interesting, so if we look at our religious map mode here, and we look at Bohemia, there is Protestantism. The center of reformation is in Prague, and that's gonna be Protestant. So Protestantism will start to spread, and then it will be up to us if we adopt that or not. If we do adopt it, of course, the papal interactions will go away, and we can no longer be defender of the Catholic faith because, of course, we're not Catholic. Um, it's an interesting time, and since Protestantism has fired, we are um, 10 years away from the Age of Discovery ending, and we will be in the Age of Reformation. So an interesting new gameplay is upon us. Of course, rebels are starting to take that. They're occupied by noble rebels, of all things. Interesting indeed. Native Uprising in Chesapeake. We got that on lock. Slowly but surely, we're getting our settlers in. Now, I don't know if this counts as next two, because when this becomes a core, Native Uprising in Kanoi. Oh, I see what happened here. So we have made a third colony. That's what it was. We could have even got we could have either got population in uh, Doeg, but more population over here. So that is an interesting um, conundrum to be in. Once our uh, colonist gets done here, uh, we can send him up there to help speed that along. We can also then fabricate claims on the Powhatan, and we might be able to ferry some troops. Uh, over here. So we got some pirates. Just two medium ships. That's fine. Um, are you a full colony? Ericsford. Yes, you were. Uh, we can work on getting those 10k down here to the Americas. That should be fine. All right. Are, is our transports ready to go? Almost. Maybe a month or two. And our ships will be ready to take back over there. We don't have any sort of uprising. Let's go ahead and top off relations with Aquitaine. Yep, improve relations here. And then Aragon is slipping a bit. Leon is slipping a bit. We'll improve relations over there with our other allies. How's Hungary? 112. Oh, we need to come back. You know what? Come back from there, if you please. And then we will send them to Hungary to do some improving relations. All right, we have a crap ton of money. That is no no doubt. We should probably this get the upper levels of these next buildings, so all the 15s will get, the trade, all the 120s will get, the barracks. A huh, little bit of extra manpower, not bad. Oh, we were in Brabant, weren't we? So what's Brabant got all about? Nice. There's a royal marriage. We'll take that. We still don't have an heir. We're 36. Somebody make a baby. So we were looking for Brabant. Uh. All right, there. Excellent. All right, so we are spying on them. No diplomats to send. Well, let's just come back from there. I mean, he's a nice, enhanced reputation. Very good. If we declared war on Brabant, they would bring in Saxony and they would call in Triol, Verona, Upper Lorraine and then Venice and Modena, we could call in Leon, Aragon, and Hungary. 
But no valid CB. Can we fabricate a claim? So we can claim on Brussels or Hennigau. Brussels is a 16 development and a 10. So Brussels it is. Let's go ahead and get a claim on Brussels. And then I think we can get a claim on Hanegau as well. So now we have both provinces of Brabant completely done. And the question is, do we call in our, our friends and allies? They are not at war. Aragon would defend, and I think Aquitaine would defend. We could really march on the war goal right here, right now. Let's get you guys up here. Because then we could just sweep in, siege that down, and then just sort of defend our borders here. Because that would upset pretty much all of the Holy Roman em Empire. I mean, Triol would be here. Um, Saxony. Oh, man. It is something to consider. For sure. So we have a valid CB. Savoy wouldn't defend. Savoy would not defend right now. Oh man, that's amazing. Just Venice and Modena. Let's do it. We're gonna take Brussels. Or wait, Hennigau? Either one's probably fine. We'll have to siege them both down. Let's do it. Confirm. All right. All y'all, get over there, and then you guys can start sieging that down. Now, I don't think we have to worry about a navy. I mean, Venice might be pretty tough. That is for sure. All right, so we've got a cav there doing the sieging. If we detach the siege, we've got 10k troops there, three infantry there, so we only need three infantry then for that siege. Let's go ahead and pull back. And we're going to start working on that siege. So yeah, massive siege uh, bonus. Native uprising. Oh no. We'll recall the diplomat. We'll start getting some spy network strength on these guys. 29 June. Really? Okay. Then we will improve with uh, Aragon. All right, 100 population in Doeg. Very nice. So there is a massive stack there. Let us take these 25. Let's assign a leader. We could, since we don't need our Conquistador, let's take our Conquistador. See if we can pick off some of these guys. Here comes Leon. Here comes Aragon. We should be able to siege these guys down. Oh, dang it. Yeah, we really need to get those uh, 10k troops down there to help thin it out. Matter of fact, let me split this army in half. There's only 1,500 natives there, and I think we could do it. That way we just have, you know, coverage. Just in case people were trying to stand up to us again. All right, where's the red? Oh, very nice. I also don't see any enemy troops. It's hilarious that Savoy did not honor the call. I'm not gonna lie. Really? You're trying to march through us. Your broken calf is retreating. All right, a new idea. Are we ahead on Diplotech? Not really. Uh, at the end of this year, we will be even. 
trade efficiency, global settler increase. The question is, do we want to get the extra colonists? And I think we do, because we do have three colonies going, and our global tariffs will increase all with that click there. So now let's send our other colonists to our non-colonizing place. And then that will also boost up that population there. Sweet action. Yeah, those those poor guys are are running like crazy. We own the seeds, they're just passing through. Don't look like they're gonna pay us much mind. We're at 63% of the um, of the contribution here. Once we take those two um, counties, nice, trading in tobacco. It might be worth looking at once we get a few colonies stood up on that eastern seaboard, uh, moving our merchant to start sending trade out of there to us. That would certainly be nice. Can't build a spy network. Oh no. Lost 130 men, but that's not bad. We've got plenty in the pipe. Come on, Fort. We want to take this war goal. Oh no. Recall, we won. We need to keep a diplomat free for the peace deal. Alright, we got the siege of Brussels and Hanagao in one fail swoop. So now it's just a question of hunting. Let's merge you guys up. Now it's just a question of hunting the bad guys. We've got a nice 19k stack with plenty in the front to protect it. Uh, where do we want to go? Their entire place is sieged down. We also have Modena. Down in Italy. We also have Venice. Down in Italy. That one's going to be a pain to get to. But I think it should be fine. Let's go ahead and send this 19 stack down. Yeah, because there aren't... No. There aren't really anybody... There isn't anyone we need to worry about. There's Medina. Down you go. Let's go ahead and work on sieging them out. So for this peace deal, let's go ahead and organize it here. We want both because we have claims. That's going to upset the emperor the Holy Roman Empire. But, you know what? Don't care. Uh, that's really all I need. Um, and then, all of your gold. So 55 war score is all we need to complete this deal, and I would be more than happy to do it. We just need to get that ticking war score up. We need to siege down uh, some of the allies here to where their enthusiasm drops and we can piece them out separately would be a good time to get uh, some extra money. Hopefully we'll be in charge of this siege. If we can get to it first, we can uh, take that and get some some more uh, Swabia, Swabia, Modena. Is that literally the only thing you own? It might be. So we've plopped on Medina. We've got 19k troops. We've got a 6 siege bonus and a 1 malice. Starting at 0. I mean, that's going to be a nice, well-rounded war here. Why is Brabant on medium enthusiasm? You know what? I don't want anyone sneaking up on me. This 25 stack, go take Brussels. This 24 stack, go there. No one is going to take that county from me. Yeah, siege down. Is that Venice? Doeg, we lost 44 men. Are you trying to do something? With uh, Hungary all in your grill. Yeah, this was a very good war for us. I think now we need to get, and it's gonna suck, bringing our entire navy around Byzantium to try to get that straight blockaded. But it might be worthwhile. We'll see if we can piece out Medina separately here. I so wanna pick that off. I wish, I wish the fort would've fell right there. I wish, I wish, I wish. Well, maybe our boys can do something. Old Hungary is a part of this. There's Venice. Not doing a whole awful lot. 
Can we get across that strait? There's Parma. Can we get out Medina now? They're on high enthusiasm. Why? Sue for peace. I just want 50 bucks from you, man. They're negotiating for themselves. Medina will say goodbye. All right, we're black flagged. Let's get up here and see if we can catch a transport to Venice. We kind of need them out of the war as well. It would be nice if um, Hungary had some transports we could borrow. Well, let's make sure our transports are ready to go. We have a 55 stack here. Let's go to Boss Poito. You guys go ahead and meet up in Boss Poito as well. There's enough supply limit. We'll get on some boats. We'll head around. And we will make a naval invasion of Venice and get them out of here. Rabant's on low enthusiasm. Will you leave peacefully? You will not. It seems that a government that governs the least governs... What? The government that gov govern... Ugh. The government that governs the least, the best, as far as outside capital. Trade power, tax modifier, or manpower. I think we need taxes in Derby. Yep, if it moves, tax it. Should be fine. Oh, can we pick him off? No, we're not a combatant. We'll maintain that diplomat there in Hungary. A little bit long of an episode, but I don't think the Siege of Venice is going to last too awful long. What does your navy look like? 16 galleys, 3 lights, and no heavies coming across from us. Alright, military tech is full. So, we're ahead of time. Let's take the military tech. Very sweet. The Culverin, the Padero. Nice. Very nice. So we're exiled. We have superior unit types. Kandata infantry can stay. The Kavosh is the Schwartz Reader. And the Mortar is the Culverin. Let's spend a month to get that morale back up. Before we board. It's still harping on that... The next idea group. We kind of want that next idea group for the to get a military tech group. So I'm going to hold on to my admin points. There you go. Let's get to the sea tile. And land on Verona. Because Verona is nice and high. They're like, yeah, we don't want out. Will you take just a white piece? Probably not. Nope. All right. Bohemia has embraced the Renaissance. Didn't we do that like a long time ago? Not sure. All right. Diplomatic insult, Castus Belli. But we are all... We're working on Brabant. They will not exist when this war is over. We've probably already looted the crap out of them. Oh, there's the Brabant forces. They ran all the way. <laughs> that is nuts. All right, coming through. Good people. Ethiopia has internal conflicts. Decade of utter, utter chaos. Yeah, the reinforcing, the Venetian troops are getting wrecked. I don't think there'll be any Venetians waiting for us. Nah, we're not gonna call Aquitaine. We've, we've got this on lock. Coming through. Yeah, the Venetian Navy just hid. All right, let's make our naval landing. <clears throat> now, are they trying? No, they're blockaded. They're going to try to land, but it's not going to end too well for them. Once we take this fort, we've got it completely blockaded. And then we'll wreck their Navy. And they will want out really quick. Then we can 100%. Oh, you raised the troop, didn't you? No, I want the siege. Let me take the siege. We have a siege leader. Everything is awesome. 
Oh, we can embrace colonialism. Sweet, sounds good. So the rest of our, uh, I forgot we were taking that malice. We would, we just had like so, so much boost. Yeah, the attacker is Aragon. Well, once that falls, I'll make them sue for peace separately. We can get a little bit of that. Yeah, that should be fine. Yep, the war will be over soon. Just breathe deep there, Venice. It is okay. Nope. No peace officer. Peace officer. No peace officer. You will get wrecked. There's Venezia. There are the ships. Pow, 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 pow. Come on, wreck them. You know you can. What's up with this morale, man? Stick it out. Chesapeake is self-sustaining. That's good to see. There's the war score over. All right, Venice, you are low. Time to leave, good sir. I will take all of your money. All 70 bucks. All right. Let's get our ships, uh, ships back here. We need a port. Will Swabia give us fleet basing? They will not. How about a, uh, a generous offer? 75 bucks. Still no fleet basing rights. All right, time to get the, uh, the troops home. I guess we can go ahead and march them this way then. And let's get our ships back home as soon as possible. So Brabant. No diplomats to send. There they are. Full annexation. Well, mostly. So Breda. Hungary does not want it. So Brus... Um, yeah. It won't cost us any Diplo. It's the two provinces that we want. 110 bucks. Sure. Send that demand. Nice. Brabant has accepted our generous peace office offer. And what is this mission? There we go. Settle in America. That's what I'm talking about. Gain a conquistador with 80 tradition. That is amazing. We can establish American trade. Global trade power for the next 20 years. I like it. Nice. So we need to chart the southern seas, establish trade in India, then we can monopolize the charter. Colonize the Caribbean. Five fully nice colonies in the colonial Caribbean coast colonial region. That could be something. All right, lax cores. Boom and boom, we'll core them up. Uh, ports are blockaded. Too many military leaders. Oh, that conquistador though. All right, Adolphus, you're gone, sir. Uh, disputed succession is fine. Provincial unrest, we've got friendly troops there. Ideas? We can do the admin side, but we're <clears throat> saving up for that tech. And I think that is going to do it for me in this episode of Europa Universalis 4, ladies and gentlemen. So we took a little bit of land here. There is Ferrara. Unlawful territory. No. Hey, Savoy, come at me. What are you going to do about it? That is my question, good sir. But that's going to do it for me. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you in the next Europa Universalis 4 video. Take care.